when I was in primary school, uh, I remember often the lads who were very, very good at soccer, right, before they'd launch a shot on goal, they'd roar out, Skilachi, right, and kick the ball. At, and I actually had no idea that, that Skilachi was a person that they were referring to. He was a, he used to play for, Juventus played for the Italian team in Italian 90. He got the golden boot in all, Salvatore Scalacci, uh, a very prominent uh, soccer player at the time. So they'd be, you know, running run towards the, 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 the goal and boom, Scalacci! And, and it was, it was, again, yeah, then others started roaring, Baggio. And I was like, are they saying Badger? No, it's Roberto Baggio. <laughs> um, so the idea was like that, you know, we're, we're so good, like, these are our heroes. These are the, these are the, this is the level we're playing at. Maybe back, maybe back 10 years ago, lads would roar, you know, Owen Kelly when they'd smack a ball over a, a bar, or these days, TJ Reid, or whoever it is, you know. Like, the, 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 we have stars that we look up to, people that we want to imitate, people maybe whose moves, I mean, even uh, Father Philip uh, Mulrine now, he's a Dominican now, he said when he was a kid, like he used to watch Ryan Giggs, like watch the replays, not, 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 not watch him score a goal, but watch the individual footsteps, you know, and try and imitate his footsteps. So what, what's his, how, does he, how does he get round fellas and that sort of thing? And then, of course, Ryan Giggs was a left-hander, left, left footer even. Uh, so Father Philip then learned to kick with his left in order to imitate Ryan Giggs, you know. Uh, he was his hero. Then he ends up playing for United and playing alongside him. I just imagine, like, well, it's not that he was particularly tall, but just looking at his hero, looking at, uh, at someone he considered a great in the game. And because these are, these are our heroes, we generally try to be like them. You know, you try to imitate your hero. So that if your hero is, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, maybe then you tend to go to the gym a little more often. Or if you're some, some, some athlete, some runner, some singer, whatever it is. We tend to imitate those that we consider our heroes. When it comes to our faith, there are all sorts of heroes that we, we can and could uh, imitate. The saints, for example. They tend not to be presented as heroes much today. I mean, I don't know of anyone really who, who says, you know, St. Patrick rid Ireland of the snakes. You know, uh, that being a metaphor, obviously, for ridding Ireland of, of, of paganism. Uh, because of that, I want to be a priest. I um, haven't really come across that much, or ever. Uh, I'm not sure if we hold the saints as heroes in the same way that we could or should. Maybe it's a bit easier in religious life because we do meditate their lives a little more, but in general, I don't think we hold them much as, as heroes as we should. But how about taking the Lord himself? I heard a beautiful expression during the week which just really resonated with me. It says, the, the fruit of adoration is imitation. The fruit of adoration is imitation. Again, uh, apply that to, to a profane example of, of football or any sport. When we adore, when we love these, these stars, we try to imitate them. We, we see a, a quality in them that we want or that we like or that we, we'd, we'd love to have ourselves, an ability. And so because of that, we're, imitated, we're, we're motivated to imitate them. The fruit of adoration is imitation. And so when we find ourselves in before the Lord, we find ourselves uh, worshipping God, one would hope that the fruit of this adoration is imitation. That because I see like the goodness of God, the, fr- the, the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God, that I want to imitate that. And this is a... I think a stark departure maybe from how traditionally we've seen the faith in Ireland where, where it wasn't really about imitating Christ. It wasn't really about uh, conforming our lives to his. I think our understanding of the faith became reduced just to, to Sunday Mass. You know, once you go to Sunday Mass, then you're ticking the boxes, you're doing what God is asking of you, what's his problem? You know, I'm doing what you asked, I'm doing what you said, so why, why should I do any more? And generally speaking, I think we, we become the standard of uh, balanced religious or religiosity. So the, the, we become the, 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 the standard of a balanced religious life. So basically, anybody who prays more than me is an absolute radical. Anybody who prays less than me, prays less than me, is a pagan, right? But if they pray more than me, oh, there's some sort of, you know, 
charismatic freak now or something, you know. If they play less than me, well, <laughs> they hardly go to mass at all. <laughs> Do you know, and we're, we're the standard, I'm the standard of normality. Everyone is like, we're, own, we're all our own standards of normality, you know. So then for those who don't practice, those who go to mass at all are religious freaks, you know. So uh, we, we, we tend to kind of sit on, on this throne of judgment as regards everybody else's spirituality rather than thinking, hold on a sec. I'm supposed to be imitating Christ here. Each I, I, me, I'm supposed to be trying to conform my life to his. I'm supposed to be trying to act like him. I'm supposed to be merciful as he is, loving as he is, generous as he is, cons- compassionate as he is. And also then, even in today's gospel, like when, he, when he needed to, he was well able to fight. He was well able to, to, to defend the truth. He was well able to stand up for, for, for righteousness. I mean, he's not a pushover either. But time and a place, like, you know. The fruit of adoration is imitation. And so if that's my goal, if, if I'm living my life according to that, that, Lord, I want to actually be like you, so I want to be a, a priest like you. I want to be, I want to, in, in my vocation as a husband or as a brother, I want to be like you. In my vocation as a wife, I want to uh, imitate you, Lord. How would you react here? I mean, I was talking to someone recently who had suffered injustice in their work environment and it was injust it was it was unjust it was uh, it wasn't fair what had happened and my advice kind of disappointed them because i basically said you just have to get on with it you know like you you you've, you've made your complaint through the official channels now get on with it just get on with your job because otherwise it's just, it's going to absolutely consume you. Because if we spend our lives hoping or wishing that everything and everyone around us was just and that justice was always served, we'll always be disappointed. Because sometimes it just doesn't happen. Sometimes unjust things happen and that's just the way it is. You know, it's, it's not a lot you can do. You know, it's, even when it comes to things like grief, when it comes to things like illness, is there, is there justice in that? Well, not really, no. Sometimes you just have to accept things. Don't get me wrong, if there's, you know, as regards racism or things like that, we can and should fight back, of course. Um, But at the the same time, we can't, my happiness cannot depend on everything around me being perfect. Because that's just not going to happen. There there is sin in the world, there will be sin in the world as long as there are human beings. So at times, yes, we just have to accept things. And we can pray for them, absolutely, we entrust them to the Lord. But we try to react as Jesus would. Remember, Jesus lived in, in, in an environment that was where his, ancestor, his ancestral home had been taken over by a dominant force or invaded by the Romans. So there was all sorts of injustice every single day. Even the, the, the difficulty of now paying taxes to an occupying force. But Jesus doesn't react as, as we think he might or as the people at the time hoped he would. Remember, this, this is a trap. Why? Because if Jesus says, don't pay your taxes... Well, now he's rebelling against the Romans. That's going to get him into trouble. If he says, do pay your taxes, now the Jews will hate him. He said, oh, pay them after they're taking our land and you know, they imprisoned my father, brother, sister, whoever it was. Why on earth should we pay taxes to them? So Jesus kind of does, a, does this all fantastic scalacci maneuver and, uh, and he says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Pay your taxes. But give to God what belongs to God. So it's not either or, it's both and, both and. Give, yeah, whatever the, the, the state requires, pay your taxes, okay. But give to God what belongs to God. See, this is, this is so much more than just mass attendance, which is good, please keep doing it, please keep at it. Uh, but there's more to our faith than that. Am I seeking to grow in my faith? Am I seeking to, to imitate the Lord, to imitate him? To become more like him. Not just to, to get to a certain level and say, well, you know, I've ticked all the basic boxes. I haven't killed anyone yet. Mighty tempted this week, but I didn't. Uh, I'm still faithful in, in, in my marriage vows, so we're all good. What more is there? Well, are you seeking to imitate Jesus? In his, in his prayer, in his mercy, in his compassion, in his courage to stand up for, for truth, to stand up for the faith in the public square, difficult these days. 
am I being a missionary? You know, I mean, in, in, in my own subtle ways down in the, 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 the pub or the mart or the staff room, am I inviting people to come to Mass? Am I being a missionary? Uh, am I imitating Christ? The fruit of adoration is imitation. So today, this is, this is a, this is, right now, this is a moment of, of adoration. We'll receive the Lord shortly. And that will not be a, an even more intense moment of adoration when we receive the Lord into our own hearts. So let us use this time. Lord, I adore you. I thank you. I praise your holy name. And because you are so good, because you deserve adoration, I want to imitate you. I want to be like you. I want to be more virtuous than I am. I want to be holy. Lord, in all humility, make my heart like unto thine. Amen.